Welcome to World Space Week CPD session. Um, the reason why we're hosting this session today is to give you an opportunity to gather ideas what you might want to use um, to celebrate World Space Week within your school. Today we will actually have some speakers from Teledyne E2V and also from Ezra UK. Plus then we'll talk about um, what other ideas you might want to implement um, within your school. Um, we hope you enjoy the session today and um, thank you very much for attending. So today the aim of the session is for you to hear from Teledyne EV2, Ezro UK and then ideas for Space Week from us and then opportunities for your students um, what we're putting on at the STEM Hub. Also, um, the overall theme, arching theme, is of course um, World Space Week. So it's just getting you to think about different ideas, what um, what you might want to use during this week to celebrate with your students. But also to recognise that actually you don't need to just do use these for World Space Week, you might want to use them throughout the year, as space is so very typical currently, with lots of rocket launches and people being flown to the International Space Station with America just launching their flights again. You'll now see a series of slides um, which was originally presented um, by Teledyne E2V on our World Space Week CPD session. You'll see slides what was originally presented by Jude and Alistair where they're going through some examples of what they do as their day-to-day -day job what's um, on satellites and then go through some examples what you could do for World Space Week. Um, please pause the video at any point um, to see the slides in full. You now see slides um, from Ezra UK um, where they go through some examples of getting ready for World Space Week, where they're going to go through some resources, what's available on their website, what you can actually use to celebrate World Space Week. From actually planning um, World Space Week to some activities you can, you can do in your school. Um, please pause the video at any point um, to look at the content in more detail.
One idea what we actually thought what you might want to use, because most of students might have heard about SpaceX, especially maybe about their Starlink missions, where they've already actually launched 775 sat Starlink satellites, and they aim actually to build 12,000 of them and actually launch into um, orbit to actually try and to improve lives where if you didn't have access to good internet, especially in parts of maybe India, where they don't actually have infrastructure, this could be another way of actually how we're using satellites to improve life and connectivity. So this could be actually a really good idea to use during World Space Week, um, or in general with, um, when you're talking about space, because they've really changed the way space missions are now conducted where they're actually using STEM all the time and making new practices where they're actually trying to reuse parts, especially like they use Vulcan 9, where it actually lands back um, on a drone ship or on land. Um, and their program has been very successful so far. So it could be a nice little talking point um, to use. And also they actually have their missions live on YouTube, but you can actually get access to the past ones. and. With the uh, Starlink missions, from actually launching to actually letting the satellites go, it's only 15 minutes long. So it might be a really nice video to showcase to actually go through the different um, processes they have to go through um, when they're actually launching these um, Starlinks into space. Here we have a simple, practical activity that could be done using recyclables and junk modelling. Fitting in with the World Space Week theme, we have a satellite, and in touch with current happenings in the space sector, we have a SpaceX rocket. These activities also provide a great opportunity for some extension work, such as creating a narrative, like the diary of an astronaut on a rocket launch, creating a landing structure to suit a SpaceX mission, or researching the applications of satellites or the aims of different space missions. Another idea to engage students and get them thinking is to have a quiz based on topics such as the solar system, the earth or space missions. There are many interactive quizzes online or perhaps you could design your own based on the themes or topics you might cover during your school space week. At the STEM Hub, we have designed a section that is dedicated to supporting learning, be that at school or at home. We have an entire space section with activities designed for both primary and secondary. Our STEM ambassadors have contributed some activities linked to their careers, as well as practical and research activities designed by ourselves. We have other themes also, each of which is being continuously updated and with more themes to come. This is a great resource that can support planning, both during school time and in cases where schools may be put back into a lockdown scenario to support home learning. You can find this bank of resources on the STEM Hub website. To support our STEM at Home initiative, we are working in collaboration with the University Bookshop at Canterbury Christchurch University. Our team of teachers has linked each theme to books suitable for all key stages, offering extra resources for shared or guided reading, to support families with home learning, or to help bridge gaps or create extension tasks. We at the STEM Hub work with STEM ambassadors who are professionals working in the huge variety of careers in STEM sectors. These volunteers are available to answer students' questions, provide feedback on activities or give insight into their careers and the routes to getting there. These role models are happy to support teachers and students in their learning. Students or teachers can contact via the email address askanambassador at canterbury.ac.uk and the STEM Hub acts as the communicator between schools and STEM ambassadors. We encourage you to make use of this great resource, whether it's for class or individual learning. Another way we thought actually what you could utilise is over the summer, we actually did a whole weekend of using the 100 Interesting Space Facts, that Blow Your Mind website. Um, where actually there's lots of facts out there what will actually wow your students. Um, especially where one of them was actually talking about more like did you knows. For example, 
the Marina 10 was actually the first spacecraft that visited Mercury in 1974. So it might not always be linked to satellites, but we want to actually also utilise other interesting facts about actually space as general, because space is so huge and it really interesting where the students might be really fascinated to actually find out some of these amazing facts, what's happened um, over the years and discoveries, and especially recently where we've found there might be actually life um, on Venus. So I think there's always discoveries all the time and we thought using space facts actually just gets their students' imagination going. Um, it might be a good way to utilise for World Space Week or just in general when you talk about space. Um, so the link's just there um, for you to access um, if you'd like, be interested in this resource. Another fantastic free opportunity that we are offering during World Space Week links to our Career Talk Fridays. These sessions take place during lunch times, so teachers can log on and their students can take part. STEM ambassadors in the space sector will be live online on Friday the 9th of October, presenting their careers and offering Q&A opportunities for students. These are great sessions to increase science capital, as well as provide information and guidance for students in STEM careers. We have some upcoming opportunities of what you might be interested in, starting with STEM club workshops. So first one we've got is actually getting started, what's on Wednesday 14th October from half four till six. Um, the cost for maintained schools is free and non-maintained £80. The point of the workshop is to actually assist schools to start and sustain a STEM subject clubs through their first 18 months. So it's going through actually providing that valuable information to support you and guide for club leaders um, about its worthwhileness and actually how to get started with some useful guides, what we'll talk you through. Um, it will be taking place virtually and it will be um, using, again, the same platform, Adobe Connect. Um, if you are interested or want more information, um, please get in touch or you'll find the booking link. The second STEM club session we're running online is how to be successful in thriving, what will take place on the 18th of November, for, again, 4.30 till 6, and it's free for maintained schools and non-maintained, there will be a charge of £80. The purpose of this session is to actually give club leaders that inspiration, ideas, and practical tips for developing their club, as well as an understanding of the importance of STEM clubs and appreciation of vital role the STEM club leader has in supporting and infusing their students. If you're interested in this um, workshop, please use the booking link provided. Starting on uh, Monday the 20th of September, for just one week, we are launching Virtual STEM Fest Reboot. So this happened back in July, um, and we've rebooted it to give schools another opportunity to take part. It's primarily focused at Key Stage 3 and Key Stage 4 students, but some of the activities will be suitable for Key Stage 2, mainly years 5 and 6. Um, across the Virtual STEM Fest, there will be a careers fair where you can actually interact, interact with different companies, with videos and understanding different roles within STEM. The other areas is we've got a workshop, what covers, covers the whole STEM areas um, with lots of different workshops in each area from videos and where you can actually take part um, where all the materials um, are noted beforehand. Um, it'd be really a great opportunity for you students to take part in. In addition, we've got something called What's My Job? So it's actually an element where the students can actually try and guess a STEM ambassador's role from just seeing three objects they provide. The whole purpose of this is actually to get students thinking about what actual items are linked to different careers. And what they might find is actually quite a few careers will use the same different, the same items using actually four different types of careers. And we're trying to actually get them to start thinking about what they might want to be doing in the future and actually hear firsthand what some of these roles actually involve. To access the STEM Fest, it'll be actually on our website at the STEM Hub org.uk and it'd be available for Monday the 20th of September for just one week. Here we have a list of useful links with resources and initiatives to support you during World Space Week. 
The World Space Week website has teacher guides to support you with planning. ESRO, the European Space Education Resource Office, has great resources such as the Mission to the Moon initiative and activities about the James Webb Telescope. NASA always has fantastic information, resources and games with plenty of information about satellites fitting with the theme of Space Week. The Surrey Satellite Technology Limited company has a Space STEM Activities Kit available for download and there is a great SpaceX video available from Real Engineering. Thank you for listening to this session. We hope that it has offered you guidance, support and resources for planning a Space Week for your students. Thank you to Teledyne E2V and Ezero UK for supporting our session. Feel free to contact us if you have any inquiries and follow us on social media to keep up to date with what we're doing, other ways in which we can support you, as well as the many resources we develop. Take care and have a great World Space Week.